I just started it, guys. <laughs> Okay. 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 All right, 413. Guys, it's recording. Be quiet. <laughs> All right, so we're going to talk about two really um, important parts of science today. You can see the smart points that they're worth 12 and 11 for figure interpretation and 11 for patterns. So, these are two of the really big parts of science, obviously. Looking at the figures, determining what they mean, you have to answer questions about them. So that's a big one. And then noticing patterns in the figures, okay? All right, so if we look at the method for ACT science again, we always map the passage, right? Underline purpose, bracket the method, star the result. Remember to do that, get in the habit of doing that if you haven't yet. We haven't done a lot of science yet, but practice doing it. Underline purpose. Underline the purpose. Bracket the method, star the results. Wait, what can you know? 413. 413. Yep. Okay, then step two is to scan the figures, looking for variables and identifying any patterns that you see in the data. And finally, you always find support for your answer in the passage. The answer will always be in the passage. They're not calling on outside knowledge. You'll be able to find what you need and what you read or in the tables. Okay, <clears throat> let's flip your page and talk about figure interpretation first. Simple figures. So we're going to talk about simple figures first. Figure interpretation questions ask you to carefully examine a figure and interpret the data in it. So just looking at a figure, or a chart, or a graph, and they will ask you questions about it. Like that one we did about the dormitories where they asked, you know, questions about those charts, when was the nitrogen the highest, and stuff like that. Those were figure interpretation questions. And which step of the Kaplan method is key to getting these questions right? If you look down at your method underneath there, which of which of the Kaplan method steps is... Two. The one yeah. in bold. Yeah. Oh, the one in bold. Right. <laughs> Good job. So, right, to scan the figures looking for patterns and variables is going to help you with these. Um, figure interpretation questions. Good. So during step, step two, the two questions that we want to ask ourselves when we're scanning the figures, what does the figure show and what are the units of measurement? Okay, so always note those in your head as you're going through and scanning your figures. What does it show? What does it show and what are the units of measurement? So if we look at an example of a figure interpretation question. This one says directions. First, read and map the passage, identifying and marking purpose, method, and results of the experiment. So, if we read through, through this passage, the survival of plant life depends heavily on the availability of nitrogen in the environment. Although about 72% of Earth's atmosphere consists of N2 gas, this form of nitrogen is inaccessible to plants, since the plant cell is incapable of breaking the triple bond between the two nitrogen atoms. Certain bacteria in soil, however, are capable of processing N2 into ammonia, NH4, form of nitrogen that plants can utilize. This process is called nitrogen fixation. Plant roots extract nitrogen in the form of ammonia from the soil and release back into the soil various forms of nitrogen as metabolic byproducts. After a plant dies, it also releases various forms of nitrogen as decays. Figure 1 shows how the concentration of ammonia in the soil affects the growth rate of a certain bean plant. What did you underline here for the purpose? Just take a minute and sort of rescan through it. What did you say, Ben? I was trying to find something that had two in it. Right, because we always said that typically purpose is, is a, like a two word, like to determine or to find. There is not a clear purpose in this because it's not necessarily an experiment as much as it is a presentation of a data, just some data. Yeah, George? Well, I would say the purpose is uh, how the concentration of ammonia in the soil affects the growth rate. Right. So if we were going to pull a purpose out, that would probably be the closest thing to sort of explain to us what this graph is about. The concentration of ammonia in the soil, in the soil and how it affects the growth rate of that bean plant. So next we're going to scan our figure, right? Looking for patterns and noting units of measurement. What are the units of measurement here, Dominic? Uh, ammonia, con ammonia concentration Good. and growth. Good. In what? Centimeters, right? Centimeters and... Okay, so now if we 
you always want to take a minute to briefly just scan the data before you look at your question. So you can see that it starts lower, goes up, sort of peaks there, and then comes down a little bit. Okay, just sort of take a brief glance at the, the data. Then let's look at question one. It says, according to figure one, the minimum ammonia concentration that allows for a maximum bean plant growth rate is approximately what? So we have to look back at our chart. Where are we looking, Emily Shelton? Um, which dog's the highest? Okay, we're looking for the tallest bean plant, right? Which bean plant is the highest? Right, that one, sort of the fourth one, fifth one over. And approximately what ammonia concentration would that be at? Five. Good. If we draw a little dot down from that or a line down from that dot, we can see it hits right between four and six, so somewhere around five. And, lucky for us, C is the answer choice there, okay? You always want to make it a point to draw on your graphs, especially for these figure interpretation questions, because it's going to help you, especially for things like that, where if you can draw a line down or a line over to get your answers. Just like math, like use your book to, to draw on it to make it clearer for yourself.